What's up? It's Phil from Zane Comics, the co-creator and writer of Magic Cop, our 1980s crime fantasy graphic novel hitting Indiegogo in just two weeks on the 19th of August, 2019. And I am just one half of the two best looking brothers in all of comics. And today we're doing a comic review, getting back into Punk Mambo. I know it's kind of a, uh, a week late. Uh, I picked it up last week, but we had some other videos to go through, uh, so I'm reviewing it today. Now, this cover, this is number four, as you can see, and we'll get into the cover. This was actually not the uh, the original cover that Dan Brereton uh, did a layout for. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, but this one's pretty cool. It's got, you know, the voodoo doll. You know, we'll, we'll see a connection uh, from this cover in the story. I'll point that out to you. Uh, and I think this is the second to last one. I think there's five or six um, of this uh, mini series. It seems like I think I, I hope they 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 do more because I'm really enjoying this character, the mythology of this voodoo, you know, pantheon, the magic that uh, Punk Mambo is uh, putting on display, and all these different cool gods. So let, let's take a look at this cover. This was the original cover. He posted it on his Instagram, and I actually, I really like this concept for the cover more than, than what happened here. Uh, of course, you know, if Dan is putting Punk Mambo on a cover, she is looking fine. You know, she draws her a little, you know, curvier uh, than, than Adam does in the interiors uh, with the, the punked out leather jacket. Super badass, and I really uh, wish he would... Um, would have put this one on, but it's awesome. As you can see here, I asked him if he uh, does com uh, cover commissions because he is one of the top, um, you know, artists I would want to do some covers for me because he does full painted covers. That the guy is an animal. But we'll get on to uh, Punk Mambo Ray, issue number four, um, and of course we need that awesome David Mack, you know, watercolor painting. This was a variant cover. He always throws this in the background, and I love these little intros that introduce you to the character. Um, but getting right into it, we start out with the main villain, and we get introduced to this uh, new character. You know, he's been in the background, but now, you know, he's this prominent right-hand man, this voodoo priest. Um, and this story kind of goes and takes a turn with him and his motives and how he wants to become the high priest of voodoo. There can only be one high priest of voodoo, right? The, that is the right-hand man of Azair, who is, you know, wants to be this voodoo god, basically. And they're, they're planning on hunting down Punk Mambo um, and killing her, taking advantage of her powers, and trying to stop her so no one could stop Azair from being this voodoo god. And as you can see, um, Ren... Renan, Renun, uh, he wants to be the only priest. There can only be one, that Highlander style, right? So pick up back with Punk Mambo uh, at the congregation, seeing all these people slaughtered. Um, uh, Joseph is pissed off, of course, but we get this awesome art, you know, of Adam, Adam Gorham. Uh, art with his bloody face on Punk Mambo. She still hasn't washed up from being beaten half to death and slaughtering all those uh, those henchmen of his air. And we get a cool look into kind of the the feelings of Punk Mambo. She doesn't really open up to anyone, including us, the reader. So now she's talking about it and the feeling of not being able to use it, right? Because Zair cuts off the magic from anyone in, you know, a, a proximity to himself. So we get this really cool color changes of the flashbacks. You get kind of the flashback of her being beaten up uh, from that struggle from the last issue and a flashback of how she got her abilities. It's kind of this new character we see, um, Joe May... Uh, Joe Mayhem, and he seemed to be a voodoo guy into it, very punkish, says, you know, there's some weird things where she, he locked her up, you know, practicing voodoo with her and making her unlock 
the use of these abilities but since you know she's been without them now and had that feeling of not having her powers of being immortal and living for so long she forgot what that felt like and as she gazes into the mirror she sees you know what she could be and makes her feel old he sh says she says so we get this really cool glimpse into what she would look like because she is so old uh, and of course snapping out of it back to reality um, Mambo seems to want to recharge her powers and it looks like they're gonna do it uh, power back up and go kick some ass and we you know we see you know punk, punk Mambo kind of using Joseph uh, in a sexual way to build up this magical voodoo energy and they, they kind of have this connection which they really never had throughout the story until now um, and you know you could see that you know maybe they're using each other but that's the way punk mambo is that's her attitude doesn't really have a lot of connection with regular humans or anyone for that matter because she's such a loner type character Back to the priest and the henchmen are ready to kill Punk Mambo. They show up to the apartment, and this is where we get that voodoo doll tie-in. We have these two voodoo dolls of Punk Mambo and Yosef, and Punk Mambo's got the drop on them. Doing some magic, taking care of these henchmen that are out there. And I really like the use of this voodoo magic. It's sometimes difficult when you're dealing with magic as a writer uh, or as an artist as well, when you're trying to think of different things that you could do to an enemy, right? You have an infinite possibility and having the limit being the sky uh, can be overwhelming for a writer. And it's like, oh, I can do this, but you know, maybe this has been done before and you know, just trying to think what you could do with magical abilities. And this book, uh, shows you know a good variety of that and especially with here because these voodoo dolls jump up turn into these monsters you know they have these crazy teeth like pennywise from it i just saw uh, that movie today so that's uh, probably why i referenced that but look at this it's ferocious voodoo dolls just ripping people to shreds really really cool art here um and we get this you know siphon of magic here trying to figure out what's going on she's basically reading his mind to see what Azir is up to and uh, these books you know I, I love books that are like this because they're quick to the point you get you, know, you get some good action in it and it progresses the story and before you know it the books basically over and it it's great to have a monthly book that is like that because it's gonna wa want it's going to leave you wanting more. In the closing sequence, we see Azir and Punk Mambo talking about his plans and saying that basically they're too late because now he is a god. Um, and this, this splash page, you know, always ending on a splash page is a great note if you're doing a monthly book or a chapter a comic. Uh, and the, this looks really, really badass. The colors in this book are awesome. Um, using them in the flash band sequences are, were really good. Make that drastic color change so you know that, the, you know, the reader knows that this is not happening in the second that you're reading it. Um, and the same goes with this splash page. Lots of reds and really uh, giving Azir what he's always wanted. He never had the ability to use magic He's had the ability to nullify it around him, but now he seems to be this magic god and going into the next issue. I can't wait to see what's happening. You know, they, they gripped me right on that last page, and I'm waiting for next month's issue. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you think of Punk Mambo? Have you heard of her before? We ha I do um, have reviews up here from the previous issues, one through four, so go back, you know, check them out, and uh, pick them up at your local comic book store. Uh, let me know what you think. The character is new to me, and I'm um, really loving her. She's kind of like that Constantine 
character, uh, but in the Valiant universe, a badass punk chick uh, dealing with voodoo. So, you, you know, in writing and especially in comics, you have a lot of characters that deal with magic. You don't have a lot that deal with voodoo, um, especially in this way. So, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't, you know, if you like comics and uh, reviews. We do movie reviews, stuff like that. Uh, check out the channel, Explore. We have um, uh, just over 100 subscribers right now, trying to bump that up. And, of course, in two weeks, our very own comic, Magic Cop, is coming out. A lot of magic in there, a lot of 1980s flashy crime, you know, Miami coastal stuff going on there. Uh, so head on over to our social media, check that out, and we will see you next time.